oriental vegetable salad, chicken with long bean, pepper, mint course, and steamed spinach with sesame. That's Japanese. Mint course, chicken, black beans, stir fried, fried lamb and chili garlic sauce, steamed fish and soya ginger. Mapo tofu, seasonal greens, burnt garlic fried rice, Singapore rice noodles. Yeah. Mint course, chicken, black beans, stir fried, fried lamb and chili garlic sauce, steamed fish and soya ginger. Mapo and tofu, seasonal greens, burnt garlic fried rice, What's happening here? <laughs> you were lying. You were lying. You were lying. <laughs> that, folks, welcome to Kahali now. And that was Suhail's lunch menu for his birthday party, which we're all attending. <laughs> Yes, which he was sharing with us because because actually we were he was having a hard time convincing us to attend. So he said, "Let me read out the menu." And yeah. after that, I think I think AIM we have no, no, to attend. No, no, he, he 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 wasn't he wasn't having a hard time uh, convincing me to attend. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. he invited Advaita, which I was quite against. So you know, because Advaita has very unrefined hillbilly tastes. You know, <laughs> she lives up in the hills and she's got her. We are right. Un unsophisticated hillbilly ways and her unrefined palate. Oh. <laughs> okay, so hello everybody. I know we haven't been here for a while, but uh, my guests are uh, jet setters, so they've been traveling and intend to travel across uh, the globe. So uh, this was a time that we could all be in the same time zone. And uh, of course, Rahul Gandhi is in another time zone as usual. He's in England right now. I didn't even know when he came back from Nepal and took off for London and and all of that. But what has taken us a little back uh, was, of course, he gave this interview. Fine. So we're used to his interviews. He says things. He usually uh, trashes India on in, in um, you know on foreign soil. He does it actually regularly. So that's okay. But today, I think he took it to the next level because uh, along with Sam Petroda, who maybe is his uh, guide and counselor on trips abroad of these of this nature, uh, took him on a meeting with Jeremy Corbyn. Now, Jeremy Corbyn is like this far left British labor politician who was supposedly their, um, you know, much hyped challenger to Boris Johnson in the last election till he was routed uh, in such a humiliated way that uh, the left liberal circles in Britain, like elsewhere in the world, were left uh, absolutely flummoxed because he was their savior and they couldn't figure out how he hadn't won. In fact, the Labour Party then had to subsequently take corrective measures and kick out some of his far left supporters. Imagine they're actually uh, excommunicating, so to speak, uh, people from their own party who are of the far left persuasion and support this gentleman. Now, he has very nasty things to say about India, about the Indian government, about Jammu and Kashmir in particular. He is known to be an India beta. In fact, he's known to be anti-Indian. And I'm not saying this lightly and in the sort of colloquial use of the term. I'm saying this because he has made many, many statements where he has taken very um, anti-Indian stands publicly and internationally. So somebody who is, um, at least by definition, uh, the leader of India's uh, opposition party, I don't know how long that will last, because like, you know, the numbers are really dwindling when it comes to the Congress. So that's sort of a temporary position, I think, or at least one in which he'll be joined by uh, TMC and Mamta and the likes of other regional satraps who can pull together the numbers. So he is meeting with this gentleman, having a photo op, posting it out there for the world to see and consume. Remember, this is also after the Congress signed an MOU with the Communist Party of China. So, you know, there's already the CCP connection. And then you have this far left individual who holds distinctly anti-national views. And needless to mention, the Communist Party of China has certain anti-India views as well. And here is Mr. Rahul Gandhi making statements on foreign soil, uh, which are hugely de debatable and very disruptive uh, for India's image abroad. And I'm joined by uh, Suhail Seth and AIM after a very long time. It isn't Sunday, but we may as well treat it that way. And Suhail's just back from uh, London after an extended stay there. So Suhail, I want to really start with you uh, so that our viewers get a perspective 
of exactly how Jeremy Cor Corbyn is perceived in his own country. And then, of course, we'll move on to Rahul Gandhi's interaction. Actually, both Jeremy Corbyn and Rahul Gandhi have the same IRQ. It's called the irrelevant quotient. Jeremy Corbyn is as, is as irrelevant in England as Rahul Gandhi is irrelevant in India. So the IQ, we all know. So there's no point commenting on someone's IQ when it doesn't exist. It's like saying that, can I go to a zoo which doesn't have a penguin to see penguins? So if you look at the IRQ, which is the irrelevant quotient, both of them are on the same plane. The third IRQ member is Sam Petroda. The only time we see Sam Petroda is in the company of Rahul Gandhi. And it was famously said, a man is known by the company he keeps. So obviously, Sam Petroda is as much of a fossil intellectually and in every other way as much as everyone else is. So I don't think we should read too much. My worry, Advaita, is not what Rahul Gandhi says. Because, you know, he has proven time and again that intellectual heft is not one of his fortes or virtues. So park that aside. My worry is he is a representative of the Indian people, whether it's Wynard or way ahead or way down. He represents Indian parliament. He is a public figure. He represents a dynasty which he claims has benefited India completely and no one else has done anything. To go abroad, mock your diplomats, mock your foreign service, mock <coughs> uh, 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 your country, Make fun of your people. This is not gravitas. This is pettiness. This is not a sign of maturity. It is a sign of petulance. Petulance is for children who are badly behaved. Petulance is not for MPs who should be uh, with more gravitas. Then guess who he's in the company of? Sitaram Yechuri, another IRQ. Maua Maitra doesn't know whether she's coming or going. Even Mamta Banerjee doesn't know whether she's there or not. So, you know, so that's the point. My issue here, Advaita, is when I go abroad, I may have many differences with my government, with my leaders, with my politicians. But when I go abroad, I go abroad as an Indian, as a proud Indian. I defend my country. I'll give you a small example. Tina Brown, the famous journalist, former editor of uh, Daily Beast, Vanity Fair, blah, blah, blah. Has a new she, book out. I know. So she hosted a dinner for her new book, The Palace Papers. I was the only Indian there. When I reached the dinner, obviously a lot of people buttonholed me saying, oh, what is Modi doing? Are we, is India safe? Blah, blah, blah. And I said, we are a democracy. We respect the law of the land. Narendra Modi did not sneak in through the back door. He was elected. Let's imagine okay. the first time he was elected was a mistake. He was elected again. Modi's completed 20 years in public office. Right. Then I said, the people who you believe are the stalwarts of democracy have done A, B, C, D, E. Then I rattled off the achievements of this government because these are not achievements of Narendra Modi. These are achievements of the people of India. They benefit the people of India. People were zapped when I told them how we manage COVID. Obviously, mm. people refer to New York Times and Washington Post. And I told them, I said, why are you telling me about New York Times when your own president, the previous one, used to trash the Washington Post and the New York Times? At least Narendra Modi has not banned them from India. If you remember, Trump had banned the New York Times from being subscribed to in the White House, both in the uh, West and the East Wings. So my point, Advaita, is very simple. When I'm abroad, I'm an Indian. Yes, we have our flaws. All countries do. We have our problems. Yes, we all do. I'm an ordinary citizen. Rahul Gandhi represents the people of India. He's a parliamentarian. What kind of respect will people have if they say, yaar, ye aadmi aake apni desh ko galiyan de rahe. Jo aadmi apni desh ka nahi ho sakta, jo aadmi apne, apne logon ka nahi ho sakta, wo apna aadmi kya banega? Hmm. And this is after Chintan Shivar. Do you want to really embrace the people of India do you really believe yeah. that the people of India will love someone who goes abroad and trashes them? That's my point. So logically, he's flawed. Intellectually, he's weakened. And in terms of relevance, he doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. My advice to him would be, go travel, don't speak. Because whenever he says something, 
I don't know what it is. I mean, who's advising him or what are the circumstances, what he's on, what he's not on. It's not my place to, you know, comment. I'm not being flippant. But I think Rahul Gandhi must realize that people look for their leaders, look at gravitas in their leaders. They look at maturity. They look at a reasoned view. You can't go there and say, oh, my foreign service diplomats don't listen to anyone except the government. Jay Shankar said. But who are they supposed to should you listen to the Prime Minister of Fiji or Papua, Papua New Guinea? So these are, these are illogical comments made by a person who hopes to come to power but never will. Because let me tell you, with great power comes great responsibility. Irresponsible behavior does not lead to responsible power. Hmm. You know, uh, Abhijit, the, the thing that I find surprising about this is that by hanging out with someone like Corbyn, you know, where, who is so well known for his anti-India stance, you're not really helping your cause. You may help Corbyn because we all know that there's a sizable Indian diaspora there. And there are people who support the Congress, I'm sure, in that diaspora, who Corbyn would love to appeal to by hanging out with Rahul Gandhi. But for Rahul Gandhi, if you just look at it in political terms, this is really doing no favors for him. So who's advising him? And and what what is this, this sort of fatal attraction for the far left, which is driving his party to the ground here domestically as well. So see, the thing first of all is he listens to nobody. Okay, he listens literally to nobody. I know many people close to him, they've tried talking to him, he simply does not listen. He follows his own path. If you insist, then he starts cutting you out. Okay. So it became, it's becoming problematic even for his own friends to tell him because he measures his friends by validation. And mm. see, there is no accountability mechanism for him. I was kind of hoping when he met Jeremy Corbyn, who has lost two elections, uh, uh, the last defeat was so bad. I mean, the first defeat he kind of brushed off and continued. But the second defeat was the worst defeat that Labour had suffered since Clement Attlee. Right. So it was such a bad defeat. He had to go. Now, this is a boy child who uh, a man child who refuses to go in spite of two repeated disasters. So I was hoping some level of accountability from Jeremy Corbyn would rub off onto him. No. But remember, he is actually playing to a certain constituency. It is actually sinister. We think it is stupid. It is not. He has given up on Hindus voting for him. And remember, Jeremy wasn't just anti-India. He was anti-Hindu as well. He was a Hindu baiter in Britain to the extent that for the first time in their history, that most Indians who tend to vote for Labour, or at mm. least they're not a big uh, uh, um, uh, vote bank. They're a big money bank for uh, Labour. Mm actually got together and deprived labor of funds, which is what led to that very critical uh, loss. And there was a, that, that was the reason that people like Rishi Sunak and Preeti Patel were made, uh, 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 Indian uh, Brits were given prominent positions and things like that. Now, what happens in all of this is, he is doing something quite sinister. He is going to meet, he understands exactly what Jeremy Corbyn is. He is going there to signal to his own radicalized Muslim audience back home in Kerala. I am with you. And it doesn't matter what kind of a person you are, as long as you are a Hindu baiter and an India hater, I will stand by you as a means of, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, consolidating my, what is left of my shrinking vote bank. And mind you, in Kerala, what Kerala Congress Wallas themselves tell me is that, you know, it used to be that the CPIM used to support the Muslims and the Congress used to support the Christians. Remember, it was the Christians who called for the dismissal of the Namudripad government initially in the 1950s. Mm. That was the very mm. first dismissal of any government because they didn't want, want godless communists. Now, uh, the, the CPI continues to support Muslims, but the Congress is no longer supporting Christians, which is why Christians are 
they've lost their sort of antagonism towards the BJP. And in the next election, they're like, we may not vote for Congress, we may not vote for BJP, but we'll sit this one out. We're not going to play this uh, uh, division of votes, uh, votes game uh, again. So this is a very well thought out uh, gambit of a loser trying to prevent what is left of his empire from also falling. Because remember, in the next elections, he's got 52 seats now. He's already lost 22 seats. 12 seats in Punjab gone, 10 seats in Tamil Nadu gone. Okay, so he's only got Kerala left. There is no other scope for him getting seats anywhere else. He's going to come down to a 30-seat party. 44, 52, 30. So he understood this. Now, let's look at the other. My issue then was... What Jay Shankar did, Jay Shankar surprisingly drove Rahul Gandhi right. What did Rahul Gandhi say? They don't listen. Hmm. What is listening? A diplomat is sent abroad to listen. He is meant to go talk to people. He is meant to cajole people. He is meant to listen to people and give that feedback to. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, this is something, yeah. incidentally, this is something I have been hearing about Indian diplomats and I've seen with Indian diplomats for the last. 15 20 years, it's nothing new, it isn't under this government. Mm. Now, Jay Shankar didn't even want to hear what was being said, he actually proved the fact that Indian diplomats are incapable of listening or comprehension. Then they come to the third part of this should an Indian leader be saying this in public in a foreign country? It's one thing saying it to an Indian audience in India, it is something very different saying it to a foreign audience abroad. Yeah. I mean, there's a certain um, understanding that, you know, your right. house could be have all kinds of dysfunctional issues, but you don't go out and discuss them. Yeah. You don't talk about them this but, way. I mean, the but, Americans, but the Americans don't but even here, talk even about here, them even here, even any here, of those issues. Ajwena, even here, understand what a nihilist he's become. He has become a genuine nihilist. Even behind this, there is a plan because no industrial house is willing to give a single dime to the Congress anymore. Pele, you know, they used to go about, uh, for, at least in the last election, they were like, Baba, book lag hai, paisa de de, paisa de de na. they were going and begging people. Ko kuch de rahe the. After the last election, people have just stopped giving them mm. money. He wants some form or way through some kind of global leftist alliance where he, you know, it, it, kind of dovetails into that World Economic Forum uh, 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 set of new age lefty uh, uh, industrial uh, uh, barons who see leftism as a fantastic tool of social control and preventing technology from destroying them. You, you've seen, in our lifetimes, you've seen Nokia rise and get no, destroyed. But even like All of us had... One even second, like, I haven't finished. One second, I haven't finished. This wokeism and leftism are tools of social control. They are used to terrorize so that the way Apple destroyed Microsoft and Apple destroyed Nokia, no other company will destroy Apple ever again. It is done very deliberately to slow down the pace of technological innovation, bogging it down through medieval uh, 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 thought control, social control, societal fear and things like that. And when he wants to bring that into India, it's a fantastic tool. He is advertising himself to become a puppet of this kind of global entrepreneur in that Klaus Schwab mold. Right. Mm -hmm. So understand, he is not an idiot. He is a criminal. <laughs> he is an idiot when it comes to in Indian politics. But when it comes to preserving his own uh, 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 privilege and prerogatives, Hmm. He is right up there with the diabolical plans of Dr. Fu Manchu. Hmm. You know, I don't understand. There's almost this like trigger that they have, uh, you know, to appeal to the whites, so to speak. You know, uh, in his opening remarks, um, uh, Suhail mentioned Mawa Maitra and also I haven't watched her speech or any other discussion or whatever. But Times of India, of course, um, carried a laudatory sort of piece on it or or referenced it and she was saying something along the lines that in India you cannot have a white man 
you know, kind of uh, take control or be in power in the way that you can have a Rishi Sunak do it in England. And I'm like, my God, we're a post. She was married. Society. She was married. She was <laughs> married to Lars. She was married to Lars, who was and who is Danish. Okay, when mm-hmm. I last checked, Lars was as white as white can be. You know, to in to inject racism into a debate which should be built on logic and substance is equally stupid. Okay, no, I think. I mean, is- so, 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 Sonia Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, what yeah, Africa? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sonia Gandhi, Africa, say. Yeah. Rahul Gandhi, what Africa, say? I mean, it was absurd that how can you kind of, you know, bring this in into a society that has experienced 200 years of horrible racism, of oppressive racism, who's coming out of that 75 See, years on. And the then to kind of make the scene about, you know, how it's a racist society and someone with a white face, I mean, it's, Advaita, I don't understand how that's even intelligent to get anything let, else. Let's understand the world today. National identity, ethnicity are on the top table. Okay, you look around, you will see it. I think it is. It doesn't behove a member of parliament. In this case, both are from the Lok Sabha, so they're elected, not nominated or you know whatever. For them to speak in this manner shows you their depravity, the decadence of their thinking, and the desperation of their actions. This is not the kind of member of parliament India needs or India deserves. A, B. They have also been elected just like Narendra, the Modardas, Modi has. It's the same election commission which has given them their uh, Praman Patra. Exactly. For them to not say that Modi is different because he's not someone like us. That is actually bigger racism. Let me tell you what is the issue. The issue is they don't know how to encircle Narendra Modi. It is typical like in marketing, you know, brands which are very big or very superior or or not very, which are superior and strong brands. The smaller brands need to reinvent themselves in order to, you know, make inroads. These people have tried everything. They've now fallen to what I call the weakest form of attack, which is insult. When you insult people, you achieve nothing. So my point is that we shouldn't read too much. It is actually an indicator of how desperate they are and how irrelevant they've become. This will only continue unabated till 2024. Today, I also if there is a killing or if there is a death, unfortunate as it may be, depending on which community, that is irrelevant. But they will accentuate it. They will highlight it. Their idea is to show that we were the original custodians of the idea of India. This man, seven years, 362 days ago, when he came to power, changed that idea of India. We want that idea of India back. The tragedy is you may want the idea of India back, but India has no idea that you will ever come to power and India doesn't want you back. That's the essential Mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. You know, I also see it as just naked, like careerism, you know, to use that word, because it's so blatantly appeasing of the white sort of master slave analogy, where you say these things that are not rooted in any kind of logic, because you know that there's, that is what is going to get you eyeballs. It's going to get you years. It's going to get you op-eds in uh, the Washington Post and the New York Times, etc. maybe get you on some lists. It's so well crafted and tailored to fit into a certain narrative that it's almost like it's on cue. And Abhijit, you know, I mean, the Suhail is absolutely right. The relevance of these people is very limited in India. In fact, it's dwindling. They think nothing of mocking the shivling, of mocking Hindu sentiments, but will cry and shout the loudest when it comes to minority rights. I'm saying by all means, if that is your position you want to take, please take that. But then at least if you claim to be secular, at least shows the same sense of decency, nothing more than that, to the symbols and to the beliefs of other pe- of other religions as well. That's it. But what do you do? You know, you know, there's the Qatari dollar, there's the, there's the action that's going on. So let's kind of, you know, 
hammer on with this uh, with this narrative but see here's the thing i actually support uh, sacrilege it is the, the the how progressive a society is how free a society is depends on how much fun you can make of beliefs okay this is critical to pushing free speech in this country the issue is i am not a politician seeking somebody's vote exactly no my try is yes. now you can't spit on somebody's face and expect them to vote for you i can spit on people's face because they are not footing my bills correct <laughs> yes. but mahua maitra is and she comes from a shakta state a shaivite shakta state where shiva i mean shiva is the lesser deity out there but uh, uh, it, it's about durga worship but to take something that is critical to the essence of bengaliness and make fun of it it shows you how completely deranged these people are but more sinisterly i can tell you she's going to win the next election because the level of social control and the monopoly on violence that the tmc has in bengal they outcommunisted the communists so you will have a kind of social control that no matter how many times you spit on people's faces they will be too scared to not vote for you especially after the way mamta didi taught the bjp a lesson and more so about the bjp leadership abandoning their own party and running away and every one of those cowards who abandoned their workers got a promotion so this is what happens there's nothing you can do about it sadly that is the story of bengal bengal is you know a litany of tragedy after tragedy after tragedy mm-hmm. yeah and and uh, you know suhail going forward of course we had um, you know Ab- uh, abhijit may not agree with the foreign minister's response on twitter i think it was pretty sharp and astute it certainly was welcomed Uh, by most people because i think the last time i checked it had 34000 retweets and over 100000 likes he needn't have said that do you think he needn't have said that why why do you feel that i'll tell you why, <clears throat> tell you why. he is india's foreign minister he doesn't need to score debating points or brownie points by being clever you know sometimes silence has more gravitas than responding to inanities you know this is why i'll tell you modi is different you will not see modi respond to frivolous nonsense unless it's election time i don't think jay shankar need have needed have needed to have said that he didn't need to a b what you're doing is you're again giving relevance to some obtuse stupid remarks by the way because jay shankar uh, replied in the manner he did more people went and saw this goddamn clip less people had seen the clip before jay shankar commented i didn't even know he was in england yeah, so no coming to another point jay shankar played into the same narrative that rahul gandhi was espousing rahul gandhi will now take that tweet and say see you say anything this is how the foreign minister attacks see this is how the foreign minister is a former ifs officer attacks you don't need to say this bhai har ek main aapko baat bolu jab karma chalta hai to kutte bhogte hain पर कारवा हर वक्त रुकता थोड़ी है कारवा चलते जाता है यू डोंट हैव टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू एवरी पर्सन हैज एन ओपिनियन ए बी यू मेक दैट पर्सन फील इवन स्मॉलर एंड मोर इरेलीवेंट बाय नॉट रिस्पॉन्डिंग व्हेन यू रिस्पॉन्ड इट ऑलमोस्ट सीम्स टू सजेस्ट ओ वाओ दिस गाय इज रियली इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आई नीड टू काउंटर दैट व्यू इंडिया डजेंट नीड टू काउंटर राहुल गांधीज व्यू बिकॉज राहुल गांधी डजेंट बैट फॉर इंडिया सिंपल वाई शुड इंडिया कंटिन्यू टू मेक दैट मैन रेलिवेंट why do we need to continuously say that oh he's wrong he's irrelevant whether he's right or wrong they don't give a damn who gives a monkey's toss but this can't continue every day that they respond to everything he says because you're making him relevant and i'm saying his party has made him irrelevant the people have made him irrelevant the congress as a party is irrelevant why do you shower relevance on a person who himself believes he is irrelevant 
Hmm. But on the other hand, okay, now this is this is where I I feel that Jay Shankar did the right thing because he is attacking the foreign office uh, foreign service cadre. In the past, he has created many diplomatic issues by alleging that the French president is lying. He he has actually created many many awkward situations and meddled in foreign politics. So I think for the foreign minister. looking at the way he this gentleman speaks and the things he says it's important to take him on no either of you no if someone had to respond since it was an attack on diplomats the foreign secretary could have responded exactly the foreign minister doesn't need to respond the foreign minister needs to respond on policy not on innuendos and allegations and curses simple hmm. Hmm. Now I guess I guess that's that's the end of really discussing the Corbyn and and this brings me to like a larger or ideological question uh, for the Congress and if you speak to Congress persons there there are people who are very concerned about the party's march to the far left which seems unabated uh, you know they took on these young leaders or young Turks from the left who are now feeling increasingly redundant because they're up against a Darbari system. which is also very powerful and very exclusionary so that internal tussle is going on but overall the gandhi siblings and in particular rahul gandhi seems to have this fascination for this leftist disruptive anarchist kind of activism and speak which is rendering him unpopular of course but is making his political party which is the oldest political party in in india also unpopular and really not very likable and we have only a year and a half or so to go for general elections so see the issue here is he was raised by his mother with european social democrat values okay so whatever a european social democrat says his his talking points are that of the S, uh, spd in germany or you know uh, uh, the left wing in italy or the left wing in spain or something like that they are not the talking points of an indian left wing at all in fact if anything the bjp is the indian left wing they are the only people who speak lefty uh, mumbo jumbo in an indian uh, context we don't have a right wing party in this country right let's be very clear about that so th- this is a problem of it is a cognitive dissociation problem it is a problem of a lack of accountability he simply does not understand what to say where because he is shielded from accountability he is part of that international crowd and he is influenced by these international trends and currents remember there was a very important piece that uh, uh, manu joseph wrote which was the right is always local everywhere the left is always global everywhere right mm. he comes from this sort of globalist mindset and he simply does not know he thinks going and taking david miliband to spend a night in one dalit man's house is understanding the difficulties of that dalit man i'm sorry you don't actually need to go live in a dalit man's house to understand what his problems are it requires a bit of application of mind which won't exist he he's got all these things false positive uh uh, uh research methods Uh, and he should have known that from that app that he hired that uh, chakravarti to create for him you know that app was such a badly they gave him something like 30 40 crores wiped out their own little treasury for that app wow. and you know what was happening in that app that entire app was getting manipulated because every uh, uh, zilla leader was telling his local congress uh, workers to go uh, put in certain kinds of input in there there is not one authentic feedback loop that he has because he thinks opposition to him his ideas is opposition to him what do you do what can anyone do in that <clears throat> see abhijit is absolutely right this also has a layering in human psychology he has been raised in a family that has given india so many prime ministers there is a sense of entitlement there is also a sense in their minds ki 
the nation should be beholden to us. Today, a guy who's 20 or 30 doesn't even know who Indira Gandhi was. I mean, other than through history books. May know about Rajiv Gandhi, but doesn't care. Let me tell you what Modi has done. And I'm no supporter of the BJP. I couldn't be bothered about them. They are, you know, they could also do whatever the hell they want. I'm not bothered. But Modi has systematically delivered on what he said he would deliver. You may agree with him. You may disagree with him. He has delivered. Number one. Number two, the pride of being Indian or the pride of being part of this democracy has been restored. I will never diss Manmohan Singh. I think he was a great prime minister and he de deserves all our respect, just like Narasimha Rao was. But what Modi has done is, at a time and age, let me tell you one thing, Advaita. You know, yesterday in the Quad, Biden praised the COVID uh, uh, situation in India. I said it on your shows. I said it earlier. I said it on other television channels. What Modi did with COVID, no other global leader could have done. Yeah. We all accused him. We cursed him. Are lockdown, lockdown, janta, lockdown. He brought an entire nation to a standstill because he wanted to ensure the safety. Were there mistakes? Of course. Oxygen shortage mistake. You know, workers going back to their homes. I refuse to call them migrant labor. Mistake. Could have been better handled. But for God's sake, he did something. He wasn't ostrich-like. What did these jokers do when 26-11 happened? Shivraj yeah. changed his bloody clothes four times. Mm -hmm. See, you know, let's, let's give the man his due. Now, because you hate him, mm. you will insult him. And in the process, insult the country, to my mind, is retarded. And it's stupid. And it's not giving him... And, and, I think politicians have to care about being and, popular. Just making them increasing, un increasingly unpopular. And, and, and you know, advice... Right. You know, the union of states. Are you ask him to spell union. What does he know here? His knowledge is feeble. He's no intellectual. And, you know, you asked a very pertinent question. Why do they hang out with the left? They want a veneer of intellectualism. Not that the left is very bright. You saw what the left did in Bengal for 34 years. They buggered the state. So let's let's call a spade a spade. On that note, uh, I must leave because, as you know, I have a two and a half year old baby who I have to babysit. Jai Hind, Jai Abhijit, Jai Advaita, Jai Uttarakhand, Jai Maharashtra, Jai Bengal. <laughs> Delhi, Jai Jai Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu. And, Tamil and, Nadu, and school Kerala. between also. School Jai between Tamil also. Everyone. Jai Ho. Teacher English, yeah. Jai Ho. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So, so, guys, that's the end of our Rahul Gandhi Corbin special. Uh, someone asked about the Kia Carnival. And uh, Abhijit can answer that, but I don't think we should get into a long car review. Show yes, I, I will. Uh, no, but I, I enjoy doing car reviews. So I'll do a, a, a Kia Actually, we should let Sohail talk about the Kia Carnival because he's a huge fan of the Kia Carnival. Yeah, he, he, owes a, uh, he owns a Kia Carnival. He bought a Kia mm. Carnival. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to add one thing. See the WHO figures that have come out of 4 million deaths in India. Even assumed, I believe it is fundamentally, logically flawed. I, I think that study is flawed. But let us assume it is right. Even then, your per capita death extrapolated to 1.3 billion is extraordinarily low. Okay. We handled COVID better than 90% of other countries did. Could it have been better? Yes. But we didn't know what the hell was happening. Nobody no knew. It tell, was, me we were one, thinking... tell me one country yeah. that did not make a mistake. Sweden made mistakes. Yeah. New Zealand made mistakes. But when Sweden and New Zealand make mistakes because they're left-wing governments, oh, it is so bold and brave. Uh, you're uh, charting a new course, new path, uh, interesting experiment. When India does it, ah, murder, murder, murder. Look what's happened so in China. Yeah. Now look, Modi handled it pretty damn well and you should have absolutely no doubts about it. Criticize Modi for what he does wrong. Which you have the benefit of, without the benefit of hindsight, should have been predictable as being wrong. With the benefit of hindsight, it is very easy to predict. There are a lot of things that Modi has done wrong, which were wrong, which could have been predicted were wrong. 
covid is yeah. not one of them you have no right to criticize him for it okay maybe the only thing you can criticize is the oxygen shortage because he saw he himself was warning people you people are getting there are tweets of his from his own handle yes. saying you are getting complacent you are getting complacent yes are january to november se from november itself he was saying you are getting complacent pull up your socks tum kya kar lo kya kar rahe ho at that time itself he should have ordered an audit of oxygen we we disbursed money for oxygen has have all the state governments make uh, made good on it nahi you what he kept but you know you have disbursed that par there should have been a mis, uh, 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 a advisory going out to all those governments saying they tha but again that is the power remember was with the states at best he only had supervisory power so the level of negligence there is minimal definitely not to the, not to the point of criminal negligence out there that goes exclusively to the states okay so that is that part so let's covid is not something you can criticize modi over next kia carnival kia carnival i know uh, uh, uh suhail likes it a lot uh, yeah. i do not like it a lot for a variety of reasons first the seats are simply not that comfortable second there are too many little bells and whistles here that make noises ac mein ghad 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 hota hai i don't like that theek hai but is it spacious yes do you get much better recline and leg room than even a, a mercedes s class or rolls royce or anything even better than a maybach actually uh, you do so if you're willing to overlook those rattling things and mind you a kia carnival is not as expensive as that other uh, uh, this thing that uh, toyota may uh, toyota okay. belfire toyota belfire started off oh. at 90 lakhs no no belfire it's bigger than a renova it comes with reclining business class seats it's the kia carnival uh, rival it is 90 oh, like... it started off at, yeah yeah it started off at 90 lakhs it is now 1.25 crores आपने क्या खरीद के रखा है पागल हो गए इतना सारा पैसा किया खरीद लेते मैं ये कुरियन गाड़ी नहीं खरीदता or uh, for him even buying japanese was a big he only buys german or british cars so for him even that was a big uh, you know uh, uh, mental shift coming down to a japanese car but anyway i gave mm. him lots of kali galoch but your in boss that, and it's think, a job anyway the, mm. the, the kia carnival represents a very good price proposition mm. because for a lot of you the innova is going to be quite uncomfortable the ertiga is going to be quite a uh, 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 too small for some of your requirements and it's a fantastic people mover it's a fantastic uh, uh, limo kind of thing so go for it very good idea uh, just remember and there are some it, problems in it which is why i will not buy it personally i would much rather buy an innova or an ertiga and modify the rear seat because it's only me and the dogs right uh, i don't have a family and things like that to carry around suhail has his baby who needs carrying around uh, plus his pso and his driver and things like that for me it's just the driver yes, the dog now why does suhail have a pso who threatening him he's an him? important man he's an important man <laughs> you you set all your trolls on him i don't have okay. any trolls i get trolled uh, yash is asking creta or honda city in jaipur having lived in jaipur i would say creta because it's a uh, It's a tight, it's a tight ride there, yeah. It's very crowded the road. Mm. See, uh, you yes, ask- you're probably asking the wrong question. I'll tell you why. The new Creta has lots of problems, boss. Okay, you remember in the last car review we did, I told you that uh, Cre- uh, the Koreans are making a very strategic mistake. They're going down the high technology path that the Germans and uh, Europeans have gone down, which is putting in too much technology into the car that is unreliable. the japanese don't put it in till they have absolute redundancy possible in it okay so and especially the new creta is very badly designed you look at the 360 degree camera it has huge gaping holes in it boss you can't see aage do hai piche do hai side mein kya hai kuch nahi hai you can literally scrape your car doing it and things like that theek hai so the creta uh, and i've told you how unsafe it is that uh, uh, this thing the uh, instrument cluster is so deep 
you have to refocus every time you're looking at your instrument and uh, cluster and up you literally have to refocus it it's scary deep okay hmm. so there are fundamental problems with the creta the breakdowns are happening much more with the new creta the old creta was fantastic if you're buying a new old creta i'll say blindly buy it new hmm. creta very very problematic buying it okay second why is the honda city bag honda very very reliable car kuch nahi hoga problem is ground clearance to tumhare you know in india we don't have speed breakers we only have car breakers with a honda you are constantly i don't know what honda's problem is why they keep putting this 160 to 165 ground clearance but it is going to be extremely problematic for you uh, depending i i haven't been to uh, jaipur in two years now so i don't know how um, Uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, this thing is, uh, yeah. I watched Panchayat Boss. I love it. But uh, I love back, it. It's fantastic. Love Two it. thumbs up. Watch it. Mm. Two thumbs up. But coming back to this, so Honda City me the problem is that her uh, car breaker pe, tomara uh, car ka base kharojega. That said, I personally would go over a Honda City any day over the new Creta. Uh, reliability issues. Just genuine. Mm. Citroen, see now, Baba Yaga says Citroen better in India. I love the Citroen, but you see, 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 see be very 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 careful before you buy a citroen hmm i would op- you know it's great being a pioneer and doing what franky sinatra said going my way kharidna hai to kharido hmm theek hai uh pojo again go in for reno instead if you want french then go in for reno because at least you're guaranteed some kind of a supply chain hmm Okay, but Citroen Air Cross and the new thing that are going to come about. Let's see how it does. I knew from day one uh, when my friend Kushan Mitra told me they're releasing the C5 Air Cross. I knew first of all from the price itself, ye tikne wala nahi. We see, must get Kushan on the show. Yeah, we must get Kushan on the show also. Yeah, he, we should. He's, he's, he's like uh, the car guy. He's like a real. Uh, but see, yeah. Kushan is never going to criticize a car and except in private. We'll criticize it. No, he can. Can, he I will criticize it. He can. He'll say. He he'll say all the nice things about it. I'll tell you all the bad things. <laughs> so, is me. So be very careful. I think the only uh, uh, supply chain. I mean, even if assume you're not uh, uh, worried about resale value. Just pure supply chain maintainability, maintenance. Ke vajay se cannot be buying a Citroen. Parts, parts. But I have to say, I had a, love, I had a Renault Duster for the longest time, and I love that little car because it feels like a big car. It handles like a little car. They've discontinued it, sadly. Uh, but you know, it's it it served me well. It served me well. I never liked it. I... It was very uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. Suspension was dia tha. Seats were dia the. Piche ki baat hai na. Piche ki baat hai. Aage, if you're driving yourself, you know, haath acha betta hai uspe on the gears. I mean, I only do manual. I'm not like you. automatic i prefer a manual stick shift uh, but uh, yeah i choose that over wo tumhara thoda labor class attitude hai khud apna gaadi chalana manual stick lagana wo sab tumhare chehre se hi pata chal gaya main tumhari tarah nahi hu ja ja abhijit is actually heading abroad abhijit uh, we are going to miss you on your while you're on your foreign travels i hope you'll come on the channel though I I think I'll do car reviews uh, because I'll be renting cars left right and center that's oh, what I do out there I keep renting cars and driving around in Italy so I will be uh, <laughs> doing car reviews for you from there okay promise wonderful uh, I mean, I don't um, even know um, you for dekho, international contact content dekho beta ye Mazda Fazda remember I keep telling you yes it is Romanian Dacia yes but it is sold under the Renault badge it is Renault is a conglomerate So you know mm-hmm. that particular this thing doesn't actually matter. Uh, uh, wait, uh, we were going back to something before this. Is that earlier question or is that earlier question? Tha? Stop going through questions so quickly, yeah. It was an okay. important question that came before uh, this. Me, W. Okay, let take this one and I'll find the previous question. Take this one. The previous Both to previous. Ah, huh? W. Tiguan uh, Tiguan. Again, uh, maintenance uh, expense. Oh, so this is this is Alcazar review, please. 
but its fantasticity does not automatically translate into another market it depends on sales volume uh, because your sub, uh, maintenance uh, resale supply chain it all depends on sales volume ma beta so there's no point buying say a maserati out here you you they'll have a grand total of 10 sales who is going to maintain it hmm. suhail had a ferrari i know what he had to go through to maintain that car it was a nightmare hmm he has a bentley okay, so also no? had 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 he's gone okay so uh, uh, this uh, so the mazda india mein nahi aaya hai jab aaya hai wait for other people to buy it first uske baad to khareed guys please like yes, share subscribe i always forget to say that but uh, please subscribe our ha, to our please channel like share subscribe like so ford had great cars can... correction Watch. Ford had two, three great models. Okay, uh, the Mondeo there was no uh, thing for, and they discontinued it about ten, twelve years back, whatever. The Endeavor it went downhill because the first Endeavor that came out that was all straight lines that was a fantastic car. The next Endeavor simply was not, and that price point correlation nahi tha. Uh, the Eco Sport they never they thought we have a best seller, and they never developed it after that. That is their problem. ठीक है एंड देन दिस क्वेश्चन आई हैव किया इन कोरिया के5 इज बेटर देन a3 अनफॉर्चूनेटली हां अगेन द पॉइंट इज जेनेसिस इज आल्सो ऑसम आई हैव ड्रिवन इन अ जेनेसिस आई थिंक जेनेसिस इज फैंटास्टिक एक्सेप्ट इंडिया में अगर आएगा अलाउ अदर पीपल टू बाय इट यू हैव टू लुक एट मेंटेनेबिलिटी सर्विसेबिलिटी पार्ट्स व्हाट आर द कॉस्ट ऑफ पार्ट्स एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट न्यू डस्टर इज बीइंग लॉन्च्ड अगेन गुड आई एम हैप्पी अबाउट दैट या आई लाइक दैट कार and let's get one last uh, last question before we call it a night and uh, blessed places to visit in india in the summer and monsoon come to uttarakhand oh no don't because we'll have line slides in the hills but come to dehradun because i kid you not it's literally 21 22 degrees it's beautiful it's been raining it's just it doesn't feel like summer so that's my that's my pick yeah correct correct very good go to uti go to the hills okay uh, those are the best places to visit during this uh, time uh, very hot and season. how do you explain the similarity between rigveda and avesta does it prove that hinduism has no but we have common ancestors who came from somewhere in between so that's why you look uh, you look so european i think that's uh, yeah I, see yeah. i i told you before i i am actually german i am not indian my name is uh, heinrich von uh, hohenstaufen and unfortunately the stork that was meant to deliver me to castle hohenstaufen it lost its way and dropped me in the black sea which is why i got permanently tanned and i got dropped off to one uh, ayer lady and her bengali husband somewhere in madras <laughs> My God! Now they're getting nasty. I think we should go. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. We'll be back uh, to discuss uh, more issues, more cars, and going by the questions you all asking us. I guess a lot more other things that um, we have no expertise in. Although uh, Abhijit knows everything, so I mean that's a different matter. No, I, 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 I don't. I don't talk about films. I don't talk about sports. I don't talk about uh, any kind of music other than Western classical music. Okay, uh, so that uh, uh, I I don't talk about Africa. I don't talk about South America most, uh, unless South American history. Uh, but yeah, so that's that. Yeah, I don't talk about sport either. So don't ask me. And I don't know anything about cricket. I mean, if you ask me to identify the India eleven, I think except for like, I think I would get three out of eleven or four out of eleven. I'm that bad. Mm -hmm. Mm. I can't even get that. Okay, yeah. tata bye. Bye everybody. See you soon. We'll talk about the Marcos family uh, later. I remember she had lots of shoes. So that's about all I remember. And she's still alive. I was surprised about that. That's what I discovered. She's like 90 something. So
I guess if you wear good shoes, you have with some key to longevity. Clearly, yeah. shoes make shoes make people happy. See you guys. Bye.